Hey, what's going on, guys and gals? Chef PV here. Uh, Troy, Team B Rotor, all that stuff, 500 below, zero ground, fpvbaby.com and .tv. Um, we are going to remake what has proven to be a pretty successful video that I made as far as total views. Um, and in all reality, the response that I get from it. Um, on comments and when I link it places and stuff like that to help people out. Uh, I've, I've gotten a great response on this video. Uh, there has been a few negative responses with all videos. Obviously, I always get negative. Um, there's some haters out there. But in particular, I did make some mistakes in the first recording of the video in which the audio levels was horrible. Um, that being said, the number of views that it's gotten and all of the, you know, again, um, kind words that all my viewers and all the audience has um, you know, given me on it made me realize that, you know, it's time for an update. So we are going to talk about self-leveling, angle modes, horizon modes, um, and just basic characteristics and um, ID, ID, ideology and theories based on how to fly or what is the best mode to fly in and especially learn and train yourself how to learn how to fly FPV in and why. Uh, there's some really good reasons as to you know why I feel this way and many other pilots feel this way that, that share a very similar feeling. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to experience and after this video, I'm going to run a sequence of videos, a small kind of blurb of one year of me flying. And I will notate in there when I started flying Acro and you will see the incredible improvements that I made immediately and how long it took me to not make any improvements before. So I really do speak to this from my experience of my first year flying FPV. So anyways... Bottom line is this, you have an aircraft and it is got a couple of components on it that determine everything and how it operates and how it flies. So you have your motors and those are controlled by the speed controllers and those are told what to do by your flight controller. Now your flight controller is smart, it's so smart. It's smarter than you think it is even when it's in acro mode. And what I mean by that is most users don't recognize that even in acro mode, a flight controller still has a general sense and idea of where it is, what it's doing, and, and, and it definitely knows what its goals still are. Because what we're talking about there is, you know, a flight controller has goals, and those goals are basically its tune. So... Just like yourself, right? You set yourself goals like I'm going to do this every day. Well, this, your tuning is setting a goal for your flight controller saying, this is how I want you to fly. This is how I want you to react. When I do this, I want you to react a certain way. Now that's done with rates, PID tuning, which affects kind of the actual air control or the, the flight and the characteristics and how um, efficient the flight controller and basically what tuning is, is dialing the flight controller in to where it does have a good, decent idea of what's going on because it's doing what it thinks it's supposed to, which is providing stable flight. The flight controller wants to provide stable flight. If you leave it untuned, it doesn't know that it's not tuned. It assumes that you want it to do what it's tuned to do, if that makes sense. I know it sounds crazy, but it... It'll make more sense in a second. So, flight controller, based on its tuning, its settings, and its rates, and all of that, decides on exactly how fast to spin the motors and at what speed and direction and all of that, and it does so using the speed controller. So, in acro mode, when you take off, I'm sorry, when you arm, the, the aircraft then says, hey, I'm arming. It assumes it's at a resting flat position somewhere, obviously. It, it, this is assuming the accelerometer is turned off and all of that. And it says, okay, we're going to take off as soon as he starts throttling up. You throttle up and it starts, hey, I'm taking off. I know that I am now flying. Then you tell it to go forward. 
it now flies forward and it continues to maintain its path. It In acro mode, it will not dive down when you pitch forward. The reason is, again, the flight controller is smart. It said, hey, I was here, I took off to here, and then I pitched forward. I'm gonna stay at this altitude and continue to move the way that the aircraft is gonna pull it. So though acro mode doesn't have sensors and doesn't seem smart, it is smart. It know the flight controller knows what it's doing. That's the whole point of a flight controller. So same situation. To achieve what we just achieved, we armed and then we hit we used the throttle, the left stick, and we throttled up and that brought us up. To pitch forward, we used the right stick and we pitched it forward, leaving the throttle where it was, and it then pitched forward and obviously because it's pitched forward started moving forward at a specific rate. It kept that altitude. If we do the exact same thing with a aircraft that's in a self-level mode, you're going to use the right stick to raise up and then you're going to pitch forward and when you start to pitch forward, the aircraft is actually going to lose altitude and momentum because it is actually fighting itself with the fact that you have now turned the throttle stick into basically an altitude adjustment uh, stick. So the movements now on your, on your throttle don't necessarily affect speed as much as pitch does. And the reason why is the sensors on board are trying to continually fight you and put you back in level. And so it cares less about the altitude and cares more about the stability of the aircraft. So when you switch into any self-level mode, whether it's angle or horizon, both are similar modes, but you're basically fighting the sensors and fighting what the aircraft is trying to accomplish based on what mode it's in, that you're not ever going to get the flow or the feel of things as easily as put it in acro and just teach yourself and learn. Now, the biggest thing is people say this, well, I can't hover, I can't, I, I don't know where I'm at. It's just, it's, it's basically to them, it is unnerving and it is anxietous and they, they scare themselves into thinking that this is harder. The thing is, yes, what, you do need to teach yourself and train your brain to kind of think a certain way. However, that way is the same that you've been playing those uh, video games and everything else that you've been doing has really trained you for this. It's your mind getting in your way saying, well, I can't hover. I want to be able to hover because I flew a DJI or people fly DJIs and they have to be able to just let go and hover. You don't. I can hover this aircraft at a slight pitch. I know it sounds crazy, but you can. You can hover at a slight pitch uh, technically. Now, it takes a little bit of other skill, you know, you stop and then kind of hover and then you're like kind of just dancing around in a little circle a little bit, but I can hover. Point being, in FPV, you don't hover. There is never a point in flying FPV that I stop on a race course or on a flow set, you know, flying around, you know, freestyle and say, I need to just hover and check this out. No. Now, you might yaw spin around something and that kind of gets you a visual. When you're coming into land, which is the other issue that people bring up, I can't see the ground. I need to be able to just, you know, sit there and just go down. No. You need to train yourself to fly acro and learn that because your eyes don't see it doesn't mean you can't fly it. And what I mean by that is I will tell you that I lose video and all kinds of reasons that I've had to fly through and blind for a few seconds to get my aircraft back somewhere where I could see. And that was only me and my confidence and me knowing, hey, I have two choices. Disarm it, cut it off and go find it and hope it's there and, and not broke. Or I'm in a, in a location where I know where my aircraft was because of my spatial awareness. I was standing here, I was flying, I know on that direction. I know that if I spin left for a couple seconds and then fly straight, I can watch the video. Okay, it's getting better and now I'm back with good video. Same thing applies to landing. Yeah, you're coming in hot, right? You're coming in and then you just level it out and lower the throttle. 
if you could perform these other moves like rolls, flips, and hitting gates and gaps and stuff like that, coming in at a again lower your throttle just because once you hit your hover point, it will if it's tuned properly, it will maintain almost its exact altitude no matter the pitch. So you just slow the throttle down as you come in. So you're coming in, you slow the throttle down, you pitch down a little bit less, and then at the last second you just eh, zip, and lower your throttle, disarm, you're done. Um, I will say that even just coming in and just dropping it, you know, two or three feet off the ground is if it's fine. It's not gonna break. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Some hard crashes have broke parts, but I doubt you're gonna break much at all. If anything coming in and if you learn to crash land <laughs> appropriately. Point being is you're fighting yourself with self-level modes. You're fighting your brain, you're fighting the aircraft, and you're teaching yourself how to control something in a way that if you'd want to go hacker, which most people will, you're not going to get it as easily. I just, I, I want to make sure people understand that, you know, it, it's not about, hey, you got to be cool and you fly acro flights. It's really about the mentality. Get your aircraft tuned right, get it set up right with the right parts, and just train and just continue to practice and fly. The number one thing that got me flying better was tuning myself my way and learning how to tune it. And once I got this thing tuned and I knew it was tuned because it felt it felt new it felt almost like I couldn't fly again for a few packs before I realized that I just had so much control that I could do whatever I wanted with it it was just a matter of changing my the way of thinking and when I'm low to the ground and going fast not to worry about it because it's going to maintain its position um so yeah so that's that um that is my self-level, learn to fly acro. I don't even have a level mode. There's no landing mode. I just fly. Um, it really, really is just a matter of you're going to feel it one day and you're going to understand it and it's just going to click. But until then, you just got to keep doing what you do, doing what makes you feel comfortable and listen to the advice. Find you a local Find somebody that you trust, that you see, that you know can answer some questions. Maybe has videos and stuff up that they post so you can follow along. Um, but find somebody local that you know is willing to help you. And I trust me, you will get better. Last key, you heard me say it earlier: spatial awareness. Spatial awareness to me is I'm standing in the corner over there when I take off, and I position myself somewhere that I feel comfortable knowing that I know where my body is in this space that I'm going to fly. So I'm going to use the corner as an example for tiny whoop. Let's say I'm taking off with my tiny whoop and I'm standing in that general area of the corner facing this way. My mind and the way that I work and I operate, and I know not everybody is this way, is I can literally, as I fly, keep a mental kind of orientation and track and spatial awareness of where I am relative to where I'm flying. I don't know why or why my brain thinks that way, but it does. So when I crash, I almost always know within like 10 feet like where I am because I just I keep a, a, a head on it. And I do that and it helps me in a lot of different reason or ways, not just crashing. It helps me so much in when I lose video or start to lose video and I'm about to get anxietous and about to go, oh no, what do I do? I have found myself flying through those situations. At Drone Worlds, Drone Nationals, there was a, when Steele was doing his freestyle, there was a comment that the commentator made about, he could fly this without even seeing it. He could fly it blind, I bet you. And I think everybody laughed and I think we all had a good joke about it. And even I was like, yeah, whatever. And then a few weeks later, as I got better and was progressing through learning to fight through some stuff and learning to fly blind because I knew, yo, if I if I just drop it right there, it's, it's done. It's gone. It's in the water or it's crashed or whatever. I'm in a safe spot. Let me zip over here. Let me just turn left and punch. And oh, there it is. I got video back. Those things would not be possible if I didn't understand where I was in the space that I was flying and where my aircraft is. 
So that is a big thing that I think if you're having, you know, anxiety and feeling like I, I, you know, you're crashing and not knowing where it is, try to position yourself and stay in a spot and fly knowing where you are and fly your aircraft knowing, hey, I'm over there. I'm going to go back over there. Hey, I'm over there. I'm going to go back over there. And I promise over time, you'll train yourself to be a little more spatially aware. Um, so yeah, tips from Chef PV, Zero Ground FPV and Team B Rotor, baby. Um, Awesome, awesome, awesome flying FPV. It is like nothing else. It's my therapy. It's your therapy. Get out there and do it. Just fly. Uh, fly safe, fly smart. Have fun, guys. Zero Grand FPV. Peace. <laughs>